During World War II, the Nazis' march across Germany didn't just attack the people and nations, but also their culture and art. Most infamously, the Nazi plunder of property began in the 1930s with German Jews. However, the Nazi pillage of artworks and sculptures traveled the length and breadth of the continent and lasted till the very end of the war. The Nazis were infamous for their theft of gold and silver, but their theft included ceramics, books, paintings, religious artifacts, and other culturally important items. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine four mysteries of Nazi treasure unresolved to this day. Without a doubt, one of the most spectacular pieces of plunder ever scalped by the Nazis was the Amber Room. A mythical eighth wonder of the world, the Amber Room was a single chamber in the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg. Its entire decor was amber, gold leaf, and mirrors, making it a spectacular experience for any lucky enough to be inside the room. A breathtaking construction, it contained more than six tons of amber. While it famously stood in Russia, the Amber Room was initially a Prussian creation, built in the Charlottenburg Palace at the start of the 18th century. It was deconstructed and reconstructed in the Catherine Palace in 1716, given to Tsar Peter I by Prussia's king, Frederick William I. The Amber Room was found and looted by the Nazis during their 1944 advance on the Eastern Front. They once again deconstructed and reconstructed the room, this time taking its contents to Konigsberg for it to be displayed. However, around 1944, the tides of the war began to turn on the Nazis, and the room and its contents were put in crates and put in storage as the Allies made ground on Germany. Following the 1944 bombing of Konigsberg, the room has been presumed destroyed ever since. There have been instances in the decades following of journalists and investigative teams attempting to find the room, but to no avail. The consensus is the original Amber Room was destroyed in the Allied bombing of August 1944. Despite being plundered by war, the Amber Room was reconstructed for the Catherine Palace in 2003. The process took nearly 25 years and procuring a dying breed of Amber craftsmen from across Germany and Russia. So widespread and infamous were the Nazi hunts for gold and valuables that they began to birth their own urban legends. The most famous of which was the Wallbrzyk Gold Train, or more commonly known as the Nazi Gold Train. The tale contended that during the final days of the war, the Nazis loaded up an armored train with considerable gold and treasure before entombing the train in a sealed up railway tunnel. It's believed that the tunnel was located in the Sudetes region, on the border between Poland and the Czech Republic. Tying to this myth is the unfinished Nazi project Reise, an ambitious infrastructure project to bring significant arms production and transport underground to avoid Allied air raids. An entirely uncompleted and hardly documented project, it was started in the Sudetes and contained many underground railways. Despite its allure and the fascination the idea brings, there has been no evidence to back up the claim. Yes, despite underground Nazi railway constructions being found since the war, no gold train has been found inside of them. There have been multiple searches and inquiries about this legendary train and its whereabouts since the end of the war. In recent times, a Polish effort in the 2010s to uncover the train using a gold radar revived interest in the project. Yet. Just like the list of efforts before this, the two Polish men found no train. One of the most notorious operations of Nazi looting was their collecting of artworks from across Europe as they conquered it. The biggest proponent was Hermann Goering, who avidly collected the finest pieces of art taken from all over the continent. Goering, by most accounts, was a man of opulent taste, putting it mildly. His collection of finer things was legendary. Fine artworks were just a part of a lifestyle that included collecting zoo animals, the finest jewels, and in time, a substantial morphine dependency. Goering sought only the most significant works of art, including Monet, Botticelli, and Van Gogh. Many would tell you Raphael's portrait of a young man 
was the most historically significant artwork taken by Nazi theft. Many would also tell you it was done at the behest of Hermann Goering. The depth of Goering's greed is staggering. A handwritten catalog was found listing nearly 1,500 works of art in his personal collection, meaning he was acquiring approximately three per week. A modern estimate for the worth of this catalog is nearly three billion dollars. Hitler's stance on art was about as extreme as his stance on people. Hitler had declared German art was suffering a great and fatal illness. Any modern art for the time, Cubism, Dadaism, and Futurism was labeled degenerate and was seen as evidence of 20th century society in decline. In 1939, akin to their notorious book burnings, the Nazis burned over 4,000 paintings, sculptures, and prints in the Berlin Fire Department courtyard. From then on out, the Nazi aesthetic would only have room for the old masters paintings before 1800, in particular, those of Germanic descent. The Nazi plunder of the Jewish people was a stain upon history that began long before the dire Holocaust. Just weeks after the annexation of Austria, Hitler's government issued the decree for the reporting of Jewish-owned property. In essence, this left Jews having to report anything and everything within their ownership above the value of 5,000 Reichsmarks. This was nothing more than increasingly rigging German law against Jewish identity. For example, many Jewish businesses were given false tax evasion charges that suddenly became backdated and they were due to pay. To compound this, any Jews hoping to leave the persecution of Hitler's Germany faced an exit tax of 50% of their assets. Beggaring belief, 5% of the entire national budget for Germany was from the seizure of Jewish property. Without a doubt, the grimmest and most infamous of Nazi plunder was dental gold. Collecting gold teeth from those exterminated in concentration camps has been uncovered in historical documents. More disturbingly, so profitable was the practice, instances of Jews having teeth removed before even being subject to gas chambers have also been uncovered. In exchange for Reichsmarks from Swiss banks, documents have come to inform us that collecting dental gold was an organized practice. Around 6,000 kilos of dental gold was collected from Auschwitz alone for the duration of the war. 25 kilos was collected from the Mauthausen concentration camp and between 100 and 500 grams was collected per month from Buchenwald. Gold bars made from melted down teeth were exchanged with Swiss banks starting in May 1940. Just two years later, Germany's gold faced increasing scrutiny of its legitimacy. By 1944, accepting German gold faced the threat of economic sanctions, and in 1945, Switzerland stopped accepting the tainted German gold. Brought to the cinemas in 2014, The Monuments Men gave a fictional depiction of a fascinating real-life tale. Amazingly, The Monuments, Fine Arts and Archives program was started in 1942 for the very purpose of protecting and recovering artworks lost and damaged during the war. Extraordinarily, their brave single purpose to save art paid dividends. Their most important work was getting to the Althausee salt mine in the Austrian Alps. It was here that Nazis had stored many of their prized pillaged artworks for safekeeping. In 1945, British Special Operation Bonzos captured the mine from German forces, previously believed to have been blown up. Inside, the monuments men of the MFAA found works of nearly innumerable wealth, including the Austrian Imperial Crown Jewels and Jan van Eyck's 15th century masterpiece, The Adoration of the Lamb. The important work of the Monuments Men was nearly lost in time until art scholar Lynn H. Nicholas caught wind of an obituary of a French woman. The obituary reported this one woman had spied on Nazi looting for years during the war period. Her efforts saved over 60,000 works of art. I guess every little bit helps. If there's something you'd like to hear about Nazi treasure, let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, this is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.